My favorite line from the responsorial psalm today was, I will remember you upon my couch. It's my favorite line. <laughs> it's cool. I'll get to that later. What an interesting parable we heard. Uh, it seems odd that the virgins with oil won't give their oil to the foolish virgins. In fact, it seems almost contradictory to the gospel message. That's why we've decided that we will never read this gospel again at St. Faustina. It's wrong. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's true. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, there was a cry, behold, the, gr the bridegroom come to meet him. And then we have this exchange where the foolish are panicking. And then what happens next? The door after the wise enter is locked. And the other virgins who now have their oil came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. And what does the bridegroom say in reply? He says, Amen, I say to you, I do not know you. I do not know you. These are terrifying words. Blessed Columba Marmion, an awesome, awesome spiritual writer, has this to say on death. For many souls, the bitterness of death arises, not so much from the separation from beings who are dear to them. So that's all right. They're like, okay, we died, and like all of a sudden, like we don't have our friends and we don't have our things. Like, okay, that's fine. As from the anguish of entering into an unknown world in which the only realities which count are entirely outside all of their past experience. When we die, we will instantaneously realize that Jesus is the center of our lives, whether or not we know him. When I was a kid, everybody loved Pokemon, including me, big fan. And I still remember when the first movie was released, and I looked it up, I wanted to have my dates right, and believe it or not, in the United States, it was released November 12th, today, in 1999. And earlier that year, the TV show had come out, and we were just loving it. Everybody at school was obsessed with the cards, making trades, obsessed with the games. My whole soccer team had a Game Boy. I remember we would be on it between all of our games. Maybe we would have been better if we weren't. And I still remember all of us were so excited when the movie came out, but we were young. I mean, you can't drive to the movie. And we had kind of told our parents. And after school one day, my carpool said, hey, we're going to see Pokemon. Like, we'll meet your mom at the theater. And we were like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. What a great day. And we got there, and we saw the movie, and it was as amazing as I thought it could be. And I was shocked to see that my mom was sleeping the entire time. <laughs> but credit to my mom, because she did not know Pokemon. She bought packs of cards I begged her to buy. She bought the game I begged her to buy, but she was not invested in this game that ultimately meant nothing. Thomas Merton in No Man is an Island has this to say about this passage we just heard in the gospel. He says, when the bridegroom comes, we go forth to find him in solitude. There we communicate with him alone, without words, without discursive thoughts in the silence of our whole being. Discursive thoughts. We don't think. There's no thinking. There's no logicking. There's no explaining everything. There's no excuses. We're just with Jesus in the silence of our own being. I read this quote, and I couldn't figure out if he, like Kluma Marmion, was talking about our final judgment, or if he was talking about prayer. And I realized... He can easily be talking about both, because these are the same thing. Today is 
Stewardship Sunday, which does not mean give us all your money Sunday. We don't have a collection today or anything, anything like that. And the USCCB has a letter about what it means to be a steward. And they say, as Christian stewards, we receive God's gifts gratefully, cultivate them responsibly, share them lovingly, and return them with increase to the Lord. How is it that we can receive these gifts and cultivate them? I believe there is a really good test on if we are cultivating things in our life. And that test is to consider what we heard in the second reading about the second coming and Jesus coming back and it's the end of the world. And consider, what are you doing when that happens? Let's go through our days. What are the odds that we're scrolling on our cell phone? What are the odds that we're scrolling through our social media feed? If we are to be good stewards, we should hope we are doing something great. I, for one, wouldn't mind if Jesus came back in this very instant. We'd be like, we're doing mass right now. This is great. Jesus, we got it. We're good. But I'm a little bit more worried if Jesus comes back later. What if he comes at midnight, like the bridegroom comes to the virgins, what will we be doing? How will we be wasting this opportunity that we have to commune with our Lord, to know our Lord, to cultivate the many gifts that he has given us? How scary is it to think that we will not be spending time with family and friends and loving our creator through our creation. We might not be reading a beautiful book uh, that leads us to creation. We not, might not be at our jobs working diligently as our father created us to work, but we could be binge-watching Netflix. We could be diving into our vices. We could just be scrolling, trying to distract from our purpose. The entirety of that, ver of that Psalm 63, the entirety of that verse from that Psalm 63 is, I will remember you upon my couch, because I'm too lazy to get up. That's not what it says. It says, I will remember you upon my couch, and through the night watches, I will meditate on you. We do not just meditate on the Lord in this Mass. In fact, oftentimes it's so distracting, right? We can sit on the couch thinking of ourselves, diving into the vanities of our social media feed, but we should probably spend a little bit more time sitting with the Lord, communing with the Lord, being his stewards, being his disciples, getting to know the bridegroom through our works, through our love, through communion with him in prayer. Spending our time getting to know Christ. Because in the end, in the end, that is the only thing that counts.